Hey guys, so in this video what I want to do is I want to introduce to you uh, Blender and from a slightly different perspective uh, what I mean by that is I'll be showing you some of the differences between Maya and Blender so if you want to transition away from uh, Maya or if you want to add it as a separate tool set then this will be an option and it'll again it'll explore and explain a lot of things that might seem weird like for example it's uh, hybrid selection mode or you know the way you right click, left click, select, and you know and things like that, and, and reasons why. So I show comparisons between Maya and Blender uh, a few times here and there, um, especially when there's very big differences. So, anyways, in this video, like I said, I'll be going into the navigation, uh, transformation, and moving pivots and things like that. How to go into uh, edit mode. And the next video, I'll be talking about uh, again once you're in edit mode, how to select all the different things that surround that, uh, the different selection tools, uh, how selection works in general and the display, um, and also go into some of the modeling tools. And that'll probably get you enough to understand, at the very least, how Blender works so you can actually model in it and have fun. Um, so first thing you want to do within Blender is to navigate. Right? Without navigation, you're really not going to get very far. So in order for me to tumble around in the viewport, I click and hold the middle mouse button. And as you can see, I am tumbling around. If I want to pan side to side or up and down, I press and hold shift and then middle click and hold. And I'm going to pan around. If I want to pull in and out, I press and hold control and middle click and it'll pull me in and out. Okay. Now, the number pad on the keyboard is actually used for navigation as well, uh, mostly for camera positions and things like that and framing. So, for example, if I press 1, um, okay, if I press 1, it'll take me to a front view, and if I if you follow my mouse, you'll notice that the front perspective is right here. Now, it tells you perspective, right? So, by default, if you just press 1, it doesn't take you automatically to a front orthographic view. It takes you to a pr whatever mode you're in. So if you're in perspective, it'll take you to a front perspective. If you want to be in an orthographic view, you have to press the number... On the, on the number pad, you have to press number 5, and this will take you to or an orthographic view. Now, if I press Control and 1, it'll take me to a back orthographic view, as you can see here, back orthographic. If I press 3, it'll take me to a right. If I press Control... Uh, three, it'll take me to a left. If I press seven, it'll take me to a top. Control seven, take me to the back. And again, I can go in and out of perspective with five. Middle clicking while I'm in any of those views will take me out of that and right back into tumbling mode. Now, if you want to do something like uh, frame selected, then you press the you select something first of all. And then you press the dot button on the number pad. If I do something like I select anything really, and I do a backslash, it'll isolate that object and frame it. And of course, it's a toggle. So if I press it again, it'll frame and unisolate. I think that's pretty much everything you really need to know about um, about navigation. So if I press home, also it'll frame pretty much everything that I have here. So let's move on onto transformations. Before I actually talk about the transformations themselves, I thought I would go over a few things that you'll need to know probably before you end up even going getting that far. So the basic selection inside of Blender, inside the viewport anyways, is right click. So if I right click on anything, I select it. Just like that. There is an inconsistency though, and that is if inside the user interface you use left click to select things. So inside the viewport you use right click. And the reason why they do that is just to distinguish the difference between selection and transformation or doing things uh, to an object. And the reason why they did that is because oftentimes if you're, for example, working inside of Maya, and to illustrate um, what I mean, is if I am, if I have two objects, right? And then I go into face edit and I make a selection and I'm you know just selecting away and doing things. Sometimes you'll have this happen. 
I was in edit mode, and yet I selected another object altogether. And that'll happen a little too often, uh, for my liking, to be honest. I mean, my overall is pretty intuitive, but that little thing is just, you know, it's kind of frustrating, to be honest. See? I am in edit mode on, or on this object, even though I had this object selected, so it's, you know, it, it, it's interesting, but it's kind of annoying that, you know, like, it's just, it's, it's so easy to add and subtract objects kind of on a whim and loose selections. So Blender does away with that because what happens is if you go into edit mode, you're locked into that object, right? I can select this all I want. I am not going to select this object. The added benefit, of course, is that I can select all these elements here, even though I don't see them. I can select things behind this thing here. And the, also the added benefit is that if I do something like this, so I'm selecting, and notice that I can select right on top of the manipulator, and I'm not going to be moving anything, right? If you do that, the same thing in Maya, right, so if I try this, uh, see, I'm, I'm left-clicking to select, but yet I'm moving, right? But really, I, what I want to do is select or, or deselect, right? So sometimes you'll get into the point where if your manipulator is somewhere and you want to select, see, I wanted to select this polygon, but I couldn't, and instead I actually ended up moving things. So Blender does away with that because right-click is selection, and then in order for you to move, you actually have to left-click. Right, so it separates the selections and manipulation into two separate uh, keys. So in a way, that's good. But before I keep you know rambling on and on about uh, selections, um, that's going to be a little bit further down the road. Um, let's get back to the actual transformations. So right now, <clears throat> what you'll notice is that blue is pointing up, right? Or rather, Z, Z axis is pointing up. Uh, in Maya if you're used to that, the y-axis is actually pointing up. So Blender has these things flipped. You might think, well, that's a little backwards. Well, no, it's actually not, because originally when AutoCAD was, like when people were using CAD uh, on computers, they were only locked into X and Y, and X and Y was really used for the floor plans, which meant top-down view, right? So when you're working top-down, you had the X and Y-axis. And it wasn't until computers started adding the ability to work in 3D that depth was added, and that was height, which was z-axis. Now, inside of Maya, it's assumed that you're always going to be working in 3D, right? You're, you don't really care about a top-down floor plan, really. Um, so what happens is now is that X and Y is kind of like you know your front view because you're always look, you're pretty much always standing upright in in Maya. And what Z is, is depth, right? So the X and Y would be you looking at your screen, and then Z would be depth. So those two axes are kind of flipped. So really, the Y axis pointing up is, I guess, maybe a little bit more modern in a way, but the Z axis pointing upwards really, I mean, it does make sense as far as the legacy thing is concerned. All right, now, <clears throat> the actual transformations. If I left-click on this handle, it'll allow me to transform my object, and I can use any one of my axes. Now, on the interface itself, over here, over here, you'll notice that there's a few icons, and there's an arrow. Arrow means move, right? So that's your translation tool. This is your rotate. So if I left click, it'll switch me over to rotate, and it works exactly like in Maya, right? So rotate around Y, rotate around X, rotate around Z, and this will take me to a screen space, rotate. If I go into this square with a line, it'll take me to a scale tool, right? And it works exactly, again, the same as anywhere else, really. Now, if I press and hold shift and click on any one of those buttons, it'll take me to or rather it'll add or subtract any of that functionality that I might want. If I just left click on any one of them, it'll just switch to that one and turn off the, uh, the rest. This button over here actually toggles the manipulator on and off, right? So if you want to work without a manipulator, 
uh, just to keep things, I guess, a little bit more clean, then it, you can still work with it. But you're going to have to resort to hotkeys. So in our case, if I want to move in screen space, I press G. Okay. And then I just move my mouse around. If I want to lock to an axis, then if I press X while I'm doing that, I'm going to lock to an axis. Okay. If I'm if I press Z now, it'll move up and down, and if I press Y while I'm doing that, I'll move like so. Okay, very cool. If I press this again, it'll toggle my manipulator right back. Over here, you can switch between global, local, and all that stuff. Um, I guess one way to illustrate that is to go into... Oh yeah, actually, before I do any of that, I should say that the hotkeys for the transformations are... So G is for move, as I've already shown you. S is for scale. R is for rotate. So S, scale, R, rotate, makes sense. G really means grab, right? So not move, not translate, it means grab. Okay. Now, to illustrate some of this here, um, and I'm really just going to go between local and global, though those are the two that I use most often. If I rotate my object, right, and I go into edit mode using tab, right now I am in local, so you'll notice that I am actually working on top of, like, using the axes that this object has been rotated on. However, if I use global, it'll switch me right back into world edit mode. Right? So that's pretty much what it does right there. Now, if I go out of my edit mode and I rotate again, I go back into tab, you'll notice that it's perfectly aligned with the object itself. If you've done this, of course, if you've rotated your object around, I mean, I guess you could undo with control Z, uh, control Z. But uh, if you want a numerical value to reset this object by, right, then, then what you could do is you could press N, and it'll take you to this panel. And then you could start to reset your rotation, your trans transformations, and your scale, and whatever else that you want. You also get a bunch of other uh, options to, for example, so, uh, reset the 3D cursor. And I'll go into that in a bit. And then you can turn on and off the grid, turn on things like ambient occlusion, which is pretty cool, I guess. But it, it does slow, slow down uh, the viewport quite a bit, uh, especially if you up the samples. And then there's the good old matcap, so you can just play around with your look. Okay, very cool. So let us talk about this little target thingy. All right, so. Whenever I left click, without of course touching the manipulation handle, if I left click anywhere on the interface, you'll notice that this little thing moves, right? And to people that are not familiar with it, they think, well, that's kind of pointless, right? It's kind of like a gimmicky thing, but it's not. It actually serves a number of func uh, functions. So if I, first of all, left click on this, you'll notice, especially if you're tumbling around, that it sits right on top of that polygon that I just shot at, right? So in a way, it's kind of like ray projecting onto an object. And this is kind of cool just because if I now select this point and then I go to create cube, I can create a cube exactly in that location. If I left click here and then press cube, I'll create a cube over there and so on. So it can be a way to very quickly placement uh, objects around without you having to go to an origin and or without you having to draw objects at whatever uh, you know weird scale. Um, you just place, create, and, you know, and you're kind of done, right? Now, uh, you can use it to do something else too, right? So if I click over here and I want to rotate, Right, right now, I am rotating around the pivot of the object. But what if I wanted to rotate from any kind of arbitrary point? I would then go, and especially if you follow my mouse, over here. If I go into 3D cursor, now you'll notice that my manipulation handle is no longer at the pivot. It is now at the 3D cursor. So if I press R now, I'll be rotating around that point. If I click here, I'll be rotating around this point. If I click here, I'll be rotating around here. 
and so on and so on. Now, of course, this works for scale as well, right? So if I scale, I can scale towards that point. Now, of course, to get it back, you go right back to here. You go back to active element, and that'll take you back to the pivot. There's another way to change like where you want to, for example, transform from. So if I want to rotate from, let's just say, this point over here, uh, what I could do is I could actually move the pivot itself over to wherever I chose uh, it to go, which is where the three cursor is pointing to. So if I press Alt, Control, and Shift, and then C, it'll bring up this little pop-up, and I can say Origin to 3D Cursor, and it'll move my pivot point to there. So now if I press R to rotate, you'll notice that I'm rotating around that point. I'm just going to press Control Z to undo that. Okay, so in order for us to be able to do anything, right, you have to be able to go into an edit mode, right? Because right now, you can only select and move objects, but you can't change them. So in order for you to change those, uh, change the shape of an object, you have to go into an edit mode, right? So right click on an object that you're interested in, and then you can press tab, and that'll take you into uh, the edit mode. You can also do that. Uh, by the way, that's a toggle mode, so you can go in and out of that. And then you'll notice that a few things are changing around the, in the interface. right? So there's like this icon over here is becoming a circle. So you can go in and out of uh, edit mode over here. Uh, the toolbar over here is changing right, to give you options for uh, manipulating the geometry. So cutting, slicing, adding polygons, and things like that. And now when, whenever you exit, you have more kind of like global tools for moving, duplicating, uh, changing smooth or flat shading and things like that. Okay, and now of course the other way to go in and out of edit mode is to go down into over here and go from object mode to edit mode. And of course you can switch them over just like that. So in this video, what we've done is we've talked about uh, the viewport, so how to navigate, how to use uh, like all the functionality that's inside the uh, number pad. We've talked about transformations, how to edit the 3D cursor and transform from multiple locations, how to change the pivot location. And we've also gone into the edit mode. In the next video, of course, what we will do is actually, once you're in the edit mode, what do you do, right? Well, we're gonna get into selections, all the different uh, selection modes, um, a bunch of tools that you'll that will be useful like edge loops, edge rings, and things like that. And we're also going to get into a number of these tools on the side. Um, I'm not going to get into all of them because there's a lot of functionality in all of them, but I'll give I'll get you enough to get you started. So that's next video.